It's gonna be all right. All right. With a little beer, everything's gonna be all right. All right. Is it hot in here? It's getting hot in here. So take a photo. Hold on. Before we I go. am so hot. I'm gonna take my clothes off. Ew, don't be freaking weird. I would think you'd like it when you breathe like that in your ear. <laughs> there was actually a TikTok <laughs> about that where it's like the girls are like, they, they hear like, the, and then the husband actually does it. It's like, ew. Like, no. Also, I hey, tried baby. to get Dave to do the like arm up, lean into, and he would not do it. He was so awkward about it. What's the arm like, up, lean couldn't... into? <sighs> oh. Well, no, like she's leaning up against the wall, and then you go up to her, put your arm above her, Rob, and Let me lean see. into her, oh. like you're gonna kiss Hannah. Yeah, Rob would be awkward about it and giggle. He'd be like, hee, hee, hee. I'm like, oh god. So I'm like re-listening to the Akatar series. Yeah. So I'm on to the second book, which is like one of the spiciest books. Is and it? I was driving home <laughs> yesterday listening to it. I'm like. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I'm I need going, to pull over. I'm going ninety. I gotta slow down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe I should listen to the second one. You need to. It's free until May thirty first. What do oh, you have to lose? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm Jim Hubmaster. Join me this summer for tales that will grab your imagination and ignite your senses. We will journey into both new and old worlds. Many of these stories you will hear will be original and some will be classics. So sit back, relax, and join me, won't you, for Candlelit Stories, available wherever you listen to podcasts. Hi, I'm Jess. And I'm Hannah. Join us as we delve into true crime, paranormal encounters, and all things spooky. So grab your flashlight and get ready to wander into the darkness with us. This is Wicked Wanderings. Jessica. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Rob. Hi. Are you guys ready for my episode? <laughs> yes. Are I you ready so. for your episode? I am so ready now. This is so local. So local. You can't really get more local. Like murder in the building? Like the show? Oh, yeah. No, like, like murder. murder in this building. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm not local. <laughs> this is from Holyoke, Massachusetts. <gasps> what? Yeah. Cray cray. Crazy. Before we jump in, we should mention our fan mail. Oh, that's right. Did we get another oh, one? Yes. No, we only have, we got one oh. fan mail. So if you listen to the last episode, uh, we introduced fan mail. So if you go to the show notes right now uh, and click on it, it says send us a text message. You can click on it. It will open up your text app in your phone and uh, you can send us a text message. We got one from last time. So Jess is going to read it. So it says, hey, it's Heather. Great episode. Thanks. <laughs> I liked how Hannah said tequila makes my clothes fall off was by Miranda <laughs> Lambert. Very funny. Okay, bye. Thank you, Heather, for roasting Thank Hannah. You. <laughs> it was It was deserved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if you want to send us a text go in the show notes click send us a text and uh, we'll read it on the next episode heather you're awesome thank you let's so let's go to holyoke massachusetts holyoke massachusetts was a booming city in the 19th century for textiles and paper mills and i will say that i've been in the mills in holyoke because there was a brewery like mm -hmm. on the upteenth floor and really? I remember walking up with one of my good guy friends, like 10 floors up just to go to this brewery. So, I mean, they're there. They're huge. Are they still there? They're still mm. there. The That brewery? No, that brewery closed. That That's what I said. Yeah, it you said they're there. still there. Yeah. I was wondering if the brewery was oh, still I there. Oh, I thought you meant the mills. No. I think oh. The mills are still there. Yeah, the mills are still there. But no, the brewery <laughs> is not there anymore. But it used to be a lot of fun. So, we had immigrants... And migrants flocking to Western Mass in the 1800s, wanting to build a name for themselves. A lot of Irish. Canals were being dug by hand in order to get product out to be sold, which is kind of an interesting fact because I didn't know they were dug by hand. 
Mm-hmm. Some of the items on those barges were steam pumps, blank books, silk goods, hydrants, bicycles, and trolleys. Around 1870, a second wave of migration came from Canada and then the Irish from the south in Boston. There was a lack of being able to build infrastructure, and that causes a lot of issues when you're trying to house and employ a new wave of people and families. The person we're going to talk about is John Kemmler. John Kemmler is an immigrant we are going to talk about today, and he was German-born and had been in the States for about 17 years. Kemmler had a job at a textile factory in South Holyoke that specialized in wool. The Kemmlers had twin girls and then had triplets, so two girls and one boy. The boy was unfortunately stillborn, and one of the girls died from unknown causes about a month later. Mm. I know, really sad, right? Mm-hmm. So the Kemmlers had seen tragedy in the last year and now dealing with an unstable income with the ebb and flow of new people coming to the area. Kemmler was feeling a little over his head and realizing how many mouths he had to feed. Kemmler said that he went out west to Denver to find a job, but he also took his family's entire savings up to $260 and was gone for six months. Of course he did, the dickwad. I do not think it was uncommon for a man to go out west to try to find a better way of life because we do hear Mm -hmm. about that. But to take the whole savings seemed odd and strange, and he just got up and left his job it wasn't said like he lost it and then he went to look or if like he just left it and Mm. was like this isn't gonna work out i'm gonna go out west doesn't he know you don't quit a job unless you have another one lined up most of the factories at the time had apartments which is a nice way of putting it because they were trash Mm -hmm. for the workers to live in so they could be close to the factories and i i was kind of a random thought but i think about hershey in Pennsylvania, because he actually made really nice towns for his employees to live in. But I don't think that's cool. Yeah, you didn't know about that. No, I've never been to Hershey, but we're going to Gettysburg, which is kind of by Hershey. So, so. Hershey, Pennsylvania. I, me and Rob watched a documentary. It was pretty amazing. Hmm. He wanted to build. Or if I'm going to build this big kind of factory, I'm going to need to house and have a whole town, which is why it's Hershey, Pennsylvania, for my all my people. I think the show was called. How the Food Built America or something along those lines. It was it was really interesting. It, it's on the History Channel. Hmm. When Kemmler came back in June 1879, the factory business finally said, you got to go. You aren't working for us anymore. So we need our place back. Oh, they need the apartment. The apartment back. Okay. Right. Because you don't work for us anymore. It's yeah. kind of like, hey, you have a company car. But like six months later, you're still driving it. Like, hey, dude, like you can't have our car anymore. Back. Yeah. It is unclear, like I said, if he was fired or let go or he just ghosted them and then went west for a while. But needless to say, he didn't have a job. Currently, Kemmler has three girls, twins who were six years old and a 15 month old. He didn't know how to tell his wife that they were homeless. So he said to her, go buy a hat for our youngest child. Just just go out, go to the store. And she did. He said to his three daughters, I have candy upstairs. Let's go. What child wouldn't follow their dad if he had candy? I mean, they follow strangers with candy all the time. Unfortunately. So Kemmler instead prepared a type of gruel that they were eating, which I picture more like a mush. Like a, like a porridge type yeah, of nasty. With a special ingredient. No. Cyanide of potassium. Oh, no. Rat poison. He made one of the children take a bite, but it didn't work because she threw it back up. Good. Kemmler decided this would not work, duh, and decided on another plan. He dragged one of the twins to the front bedroom where he shot her in the back of the <gasps> head behind the earlobe. You know, this is not where I thought this episode was going, I, yeah. even though we talk about murder all the time. Yes. He then took the other twin to the rear bedroom and did the same to her. The youngest, I imagine, was petrified by this point. Her father then took her, put her on the bed face down, put a pillow over her head, and fired two shots, one behind each ear. What kind of fucked up Chris Watts bullshit is that? (laughs) Now, when I'm doing this episode, and in the show notes, it'll say what book I read. I was like, there's got to be more to this story because it was was such a short portion of this book. Yeah. And I found an article... And I was flabbergasted about this guy. And I'm, it's not over yet. And I I have no words. Like, I, just, <laughs> I, I, I really have no words. <laughs> I can tell. So Kemmler then locked the apartment door behind him and walked to the bar where he paced back and forth for about 20 minutes. He then ordered a beer, drank it, and asked the bar owner to come outside. He handed his house key to the bar owner and said, I have just killed my three children. I have taken my last glass of beer and walked away. 
And so his wife comes back and is like... So the bar owner okay. was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Went to the house, got there about the same time the mother did, and they saw that their children were dead, but the youngest was somehow still alive <sighs> at that point. And she got two shots to the head. Kemmler was not hiding from the law by any means because he decided to go to a different bar to drink after giving his keys away and confessing to his crime. So he lied. He just said he had his last beer. Mm. <laughs> not yeah. only is he a murderer, he's a liar. <laughs> Word got around of what he did, and a gentleman named Adolf Engel saw Kemmler and brought him to the sheriff's station. Kemmler still had the weapon on him with four chambers empty and a piece of paper in his pocket that said cyanide of potassium, which... I don't know if it's because he's like, okay, this is what I have to look for at the store, but I thought that was very strange. His shopping list. Yeah. <laughs> Kemmler admitted what he did and was locked up for further investigation. The sheriff and Mr. Engel listened to him confess and say, quote, my fear was out of the girls grew up, they might be led astray. They would be happier in heaven. I have been meditating on this crime for 10 days. I too want to die now. I intended, I truly did, to kill myself after them, but seeing their dead forms, I shrank from it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. A sincere expression of gratitude to our esteemed patrons. Lynn from Massachusetts, Heather from New Jersey, Chelsea from Utah, Kate from Massachusetts, Margie from Connecticut, Courtney from Massachusetts, Amber from Idaho, and Stephanie from Massachusetts for their generous monthly contributions. Their support fuels the engine of our investigative endeavors here at Wicked Wanderings. You too can become a valued patron and unlock a realm of exclusive content by supporting our mission for as little as $3 a month. Your contribution sustains our commitment to delivering high quality content. Visit wickedwanderingspodcast.com and click on the support tab to join the ranks of our dedicated patrons. Your investment not only keeps our podcast thriving, but also ensures that you are at the forefront of our intriguing discoveries with bonus content only available for those patron subscribers. Thank you for considering this opportunity to deepen your engagement with Wicked Wanderings. Your support is paramount in enabling us to continue our journey into the realms of mystery and true crime. And now back to the shit show. pussy he went to denver got another family and then came back to take care of this one you think <laughs> did i oh did boy. I you're fired it? you're fired <laughs> you got it part right i had no idea anyway okay as the evening progressed someone came to, to the jail to let kemler know that his youngest daughter was alive and fighting for her life kemler then made a scene asking if he could be let out so he could finish the job <gasps> wow what the fuck yeah yeah this man did not show any remorse for what he did. Obviously. He slept fine. He ate good portions of his food and debated with the officers if his mugshot was good enough. Wow. <laughs> wow. He's a piece of work. He certified insane. His youngest daughter did not survive, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But before he was hanged, he wrote a letter to the wife of an overseer of his old job. It was determined that he wrote the letter before he committed the crimes. So he was literally afraid of his daughters becoming prostitutes in the street. That's that's what his fear was. Okay. So I'm sure my dad had that same fear, but he didn't <laughs> kill me. Nor did I become a prostitute. People did not pay me. So it was weird Just that kidding. he wrote a letter, not to his wife, but to another woman. But it said, what I have done is the last act of my life. I wish I could have died today. I give up life because of its trouble. I went west to begin another life, but could not, because I couldn't forget my children. I went into business with a partner, but couldn't stay, and returned to Holyoke to wind up my family affairs, poison my children, and shoot myself through the chest. Lies. This life is not worth living for any longer, and I can't live without my children. My wife knows nothing about this. She believes we are going away. He's an idiot. Yes, he is. So. I can't live without my children, so I'm going to murder them in cold blood. <laughs> My life is so hard. Kemmler wanted to be hung for his crimes within a week of going to court. But the judge said he had to wait for his trial date in December. And you know where he awaited trial? In Holyoke? Ludlow. 
at the Springfield Jail. Oh. That is now tore down. They used to be no. on the water. No shit. And if he was going to be hung, he would have fucking hung around here. Right here? <laughs> he would have fucking hung. Fucking hung here. <laughs> Motherfucker. You know what? Right here. Right here. Before this uh, high school was built? We don't talk about where we live, Rob. <laughs> I think people know by now <laughs> after all the stuff we've but, talked about. Dude, when they were like, he away a trial the Springfield Jail, I was like, oh my God, they just tore that place down like, what, five Ten years, years ago? Ten years ago? Was it really at this point? It might have even been more than that, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, he's going to haunt you guys. Come at me, John Kemmler. Pfft, fuck you, man. You're What year was this person. again? He's a pussy. 1879? 1879, okay. Long time ago. Mm. I mean, I guess in retrospect of life, it's not that long ago, right? Mm-hmm. A little over 100 years. 150. Yeah. So, Jessica. Hannah. Remember how Kemmler took all his family's money to go west to find a job? Because he had a hoochie out there. Apparently, that is not the whole truth of what he was doing, and apparently you called him out on it already. Yeah. Two months after the trial day was set... The Chicago police received a letter from a doctor telling them about this German man who had just killed his three children in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. The doctor then goes on to say that he's looking into a case of insanity for this patient Uh and wanted to know if a man named Rudolf Bernard resided in Chicago and owned a bar. The Chicago police responded back and said, yes, Rudolf had bought a bar back in March and then married a woman shortly after. And he's Rudolf? Five days after the marriage, he left for Holyoke, Massachusetts, telling his wife he had to attend to some family business and she hadn't heard from him since. Family business, a.k.a. killing my fucking children. (laughs) Pictures were sent to Chicago and the wife was able to identify Kemmler as Rudolph Bernard. Because of this, the judge ruled insanity and he was put into an asylum and was said that he had Bright's disease, which I had to look up because I'd never heard of it. Yeah, so what is that? It's an old term for kidney disease. Oh. And they thought he would die sooner rather than later. But if you look into death records, you may find a John Kemmler who died in 1897 at the Bridgewater State Farm in Massachusetts, which is an asylum mm-hmm. of suicide by strangulation. So he eventually hung himself. It is possible that this is the same John Kemmler and his health issues had been misdiagnosed or misreported and maybe he felt guilt after all. I know. He was feeling sorry for himself. I don't think he felt guilt. That was 20 years later. Right. Exactly. Because they're like, oh, he has Bright's disease. He'll die within a couple months. Like, You know what? I'm glad because he wanted to hang then. I'm glad that he had to wait it out. Yep. And- and those poor babies and that poor woman so there was some talk of the ex-wife at some point and they looked at death records for her and they saw that she lived long and they were like we hope you found peace that i mean with the miscarriages you lost five children Mm -hmm. five children like that's enough to fuck somebody up right Mm mm-hmm because you went to and go then, buy a hat? Like, fuck you, John Kemmler. Yeah. What, what a douche canoe. Yeah, that is a major douche canoe. So. Major, major douche canoe. That is the story of John Kemmler, and I'm sticking to it. I'd hope so. That's very interesting. I thought that was an interesting case. And you said it was 1897? Yeah. Well, that he died. Yeah. Okay. So I looked up when this building was first opened or built. It was 1898, so... Yeah, he could have been hung here. But he didn't hang. They didn't hang him, no. But Yes, if, but he could have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Because before this was built, there was a small prison, a small jail for in Springfield that was here. Mm. And they used to hang everyone here on this site. So I'm wondering if like those people that were being hung, they kind of got transferred here as like a end of life place because they hung like literally right like in the Death parking Row. lot so yeah because right in the parking lot is where they hung people not the parking lot but it, it was it was this site that there was a jail it wasn't as big as this building we really should look into that we really should but if you're saying springfield jail maybe it was the jail that was on this property because i don't know I when that one meant. was built because that was more of a modern day i say modern but it was you know, brick and... But I thought, thought all prisons back then would have been brick. Like, I, don't, I don't know, but this is the late 1800s. More stone late, and late. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I well, I guess they would use what they had, right? So if we think about this area, it's a lot of redstone. 
That's more just East Longmeadow. Some fun facts about Holyoke. It's where volleyball was invented. (laughs) On a brighter note. (laughs) And I don't know for sure. Remember when I did the episode about the Springfield Witch Trials? One of the Mm -hmm. Uh residents was a Holyoke. 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 Have you been to Wisteria Hearst? No. It's beautiful. I've driven by it a lot of times. Yeah, it's a beautiful home. And part in one of their windows... When mm-hmm. they redid it, the actual stained glass window is actually at the Met in New York City. Well, shit. Yes. My brother has shown me it. And he's like, you recognize this? And it says from Holyoke, Massachusetts, from Wisteria Hearst. So it's pretty popular to be at the freaking Met. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I I rather enjoyed this story because it's local. Yeah, I love learning local yeah. history. Yeah, not everything was roses. I mean, I feel bad for the children. It was kind of a very, it was very sad. I, I kind of wonder what also happened with the second wife, you know? Mm-hmm. I think it was easier back then to become someone else because there wasn't as much yeah, I, ways to identify identification. you. Identification. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, he became Rudolph. Rudolph, around now. I was right just there. about to start singing. Yes, Rob. So... I found out some information about the Springfield Jail. The old York Street Jail, which was right on the Connecticut River, was in Springfield. It operated from 1887 to 1992, Mm. when the current Hamden County House of Corrections was built in Ludlow. So 1992. Uh, The jail was site to several hangings, including the last legal one in Massachusetts, which took place on December 30th, 1898. Do we know who that was? Because that might be an interesting case. It does not say. So it could have been here then because they didn't open that one till 18... 1887, they opened the York Street one. Okay, so they probably were over there. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Might as well just give everyone your GPS location. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's not like you can get into this building. Okay, let's keep going. Thank you, Wanderers, Thanks, for a wonderful wanderers. evening. Thanks for the story, Hannah. I had no idea. It was a shorty, but a goodie. That's what she said? <laughs> Maybe. Mm, nah. Mm, no, never. <laughs> Don't forget to send us a text message. And like our on all of our socials. And like and subscribe. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening today. Wicked Wanderings is hosted by Hannah Fitzpatrick and me, Jess Goonan. And it's produced by Rob Fitzpatrick. Music by Sasha End. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to leave us a rating and review. And be sure to follow us on all our socials. You can find the links down in the show notes. And if you're looking for some Wicked Cozy t-shirts or hoodies, head over to our merch store. Thank you for being a part of the Wicked Wanderings community. We appreciate each and every one of you. Stay curious, keep exploring, and always remember to keep on wandering. I'm Jim Hubmaster. Join me this summer for tales that will grab your imagination and ignite your senses. We will journey into both new and old worlds. Many of these stories you will hear will be original and some will be classics. So sit back, relax, and join me, won't you, for Candlelit Stories, available wherever you listen to podcasts.
Get ready to rock your style with Wicked Wanderings. Introducing our brand new merch. Cozy up in our Wicked hoodies. Or flaunt your vibe in our sweet ass t-shirt. Join the Wicked Wanderings crew, explore the mysterious, and head to our merch store now. The link is in the show notes below. 